Hello and welcome to Colin Bradley Artcast. I'm Stephen Bradley. And I'm Colin Bradley. Welcome along everyone to another video podcast. We're uh, broadcasting this on YouTube, so hello everyone. Hello uh, we're everybody. we have another enhanced podcast. There'll be uh, videos and images and all sorts of interactive stuff for you to watch if you're on YouTube. Wow. Uh, but if you're listening on the, uh, on the audio version, then uh, you're still going to get a lot of good Valuable yeah. advice, as oh, always. It's like a bit of a bonus, really, isn't it? It is, yeah. That's why I, I call it like a little enhanced Good. podcast. So we'll have some interactive stuff down here. Nice for us to be in your studio again, Steve, in London. Yeah, it's good. It's good to be here as well. <laughs> and, folks, happy birthday to Steve. It's Steve's <laughs> birthday today, folks, and we're going out to lunch. It is. Ireland and I are it, taking Stephen out. Yeah, it is, uh, is my birthday. Thanks for mentioning that. That's all right. Um but yeah, how are you anyway? You've been busy uh, the last uh, week. Yeah, I've been a great week. And uh, once again, playing with my new toys. Yeah, got and, some uh, new materials, new pencils and paper and things like that you're trying out and a new yes. camera and things. Yes, absolutely, yes. I'm, I'm like it, you know, all my Christmases have come at once. That's how I feel. <laughs> I've been really, really excited. I love doing it. And one of the bonuses, of course, we've uh, we've got by... Uh, having a new camera, I decided to do a few more cartoons. So we've upped the cartoons. Yeah, that's it. So it, it was a, it, so I've, I've extended because I love, the, I love doing the cartoons. And I think when people see them, they'll, they'll see my enthusiasm. It's got your stamp on it. Your kind of, uh, mm. you can, you can see that it's a little bit of you in there. Yeah. Oh, so absolutely. I think it's, I think yeah. it's going to be great for people to do the same thing, you know, and, and explore that side of creativity. Well, I hope so. There's a there's a good point to it because the, the way I set out the cartoon, and we we talk a little bit more when we get to um, promote them, but uh, there is a, a very good definite point of of teaching people to draw. It taught me to draw in the first place, and it's drawing skills that are fun. Mm. You know that it's all fun. And you know, sometimes when you're drawing, especially if you use life classes and you go to drawing art art school, it's a, there's a lot of seriousness about mm. it, and I suppose that's right. But when you're doing it the way I'm doing it, with the cartoons, particularly, it's all fun. It loosens you up a bit, I bet. Oh, absolutely. You're going to a different world, uh, without doubt. Yeah. So I think there's a good good uh, reason for people to do it, even if they. Just try it out, and uh, they're going to increase their drawing skills. Mm. Well, it's, uh, I know we keep talking about the, the cartoons, and I promise they are coming soon, but uh, it's worth mentioning because in this whole process of doing the cartoons, you're trying out different pencils and paper and exploring what, mm. what works as mm. well because it's a new subject material that we haven't explored teaching mm. before on the site, so it's important to know what people can use and what's the best stuff they can use them i mean it, you're obviously more flexible uh with the cartoons because it's coloring pencils and they're so widely available whereas mm. pastel pencils it, it's really the faber castell are the best so it's kind of it's a bit more linear with that but with this it seems to be so much more free oh yes every i, I would i have no doubt that everybody's got coloring pencils at home and they all work that's yeah. the great thing i mean the, the albrecht Dura the ones I use are without doubt the best ones in my opinion, but they're made by Faber Castell. So they're going to be, but they are, they are nice and they produce for me the ideal cartoon, um, medium. Cause if you use watercolor and inks, there's a lot of risk there. And I know that the professional cartoonists, they use the inks, but there, there's a lot of risk there. And, You'll Not as easy for beginners. Without, oh no, they wouldn't be able to do it, yeah. Steve. Um, but the colour pencils, oh yeah. I mean, they they are really good. But you know, we've got we've I've sourced the paper, the, the paper that I use, uh, and you as you know the pencils I use. So I've got it right. And the, the way the drawing system that we're going to introduce and show people and talk about a lot is a good one. It's how I started. And uh, I don't think I've not seen it done anywhere else. Now, there may be there may be other artists that are doing mm. similar things to me, but I'd, I've not seen it done the way I've done it. It's a similar take on the 
existing drawing tutorials that mm. are already out there. So if yeah. people have given those a go, the, the figure life drawing on our website. That's right. Uh, it's a similar kind of thing, but obviously with cartoons you can be a bit like it's a, perhaps a less serious subject matter than mm. the life drawing that you you mentioned earlier as well. So mm. it's you can be a bit more yes, free. Yes, more flexible and freer, yes, with it, definitely. But there is still a certain amount of discipline to it. Yeah, I bet. And we know how successful the square drawing system has been. I mean, we, we sell loads and loads and loads of them. They've been popular for years now. Mm. So we know that they're popular. And all I've done is, is, is a variation of the square drawing. So we know that works. So I'm sure people are going to love it. Mm. So the other thing that I sprung on people last week, and if you've been on the website, you've probably noticed. If you haven't, then I, I can tell you now that we've launched three new membership packages uh, three lower priced, lower tiered packages uh, on the membership site. So it's even more affordable to, to join and learn your techniques. Mm. Uh, the the first one was a, an animals only uh, membership that was five ninety nine. That is five ninety nine that you can sign up for. And, and that is what it is. It gives you access to all the animal tutorials, which there's over 75 now. Uh, and you can learn to use pasta pencils and learn to draw animals for just five ninety nine five ninety nine a month. And uh, we've uh, launched the landscapes only package, uh, which includes the watercolor as well, and that's five ninety nine a month. So if you want to, purely if you just wanted to learn how to paint with watercolor, there's over thirty two hours of watercolor tutorials that you could watch for five ninety nine a month. Um, and then the last one we launched was uh, the portraits and still life combined um, package, so you get access to all the portraits and all the still life uh, tutorials, and that's just three ninety nine a month because there's less of them. And uh, so it's, it's even more affordable if you just want to dip in and dip out. There's no tie-ins. You're not, you're not tied in for a year or anything like that. You can cancel any time. You could start off with the portraits and then decide that you want to, you know, try landscapes. You just switch over. It's, it's really easy to do. And, um, and we've always, always got the all-in membership as well. If you just want to try everything, then those are still available to you right. as well. So it's just, um, I suppose, we, we just thought, how, how can people give this a go how can we approach more people and uh, by offering a lower tiered package then more people can try it mm, mm. and uh and enjoy it mm. if, especially if you love drawing animals i mean i know we've talked about it's it's, it's good to try everything because you become a better artist if you explore the different ranges of subjects that you can do but if someone just wants to try animals for a mm. month then mm. they can and it's absolutely yeah it's absolutely. easier a lot yeah. easier and all of those packages give you access to the members forum Mm. Uh, the community so if you, you you can still interact with everyone share your artwork you get all of those perks as well good so Gr worth mentioning stuff. giving yeah. those a, a bit of a plug anyway let's move on to your emails this week the first one comes from paula she says hi there uh, i'm on my second project i have now to complete the background and highlight all the outlines but do i have to make the background like your one now the second project paula's doing is the black labrador uh which is a pretty advanced picture um, I should like to keep the background light. Can I make it a pale pink, like the colour of the tongue, and maybe a touch of green? Would this be acceptable? I attach my painting as it is so far, uh, and one, once again appreciate your feedback, as this is only my second ever pastel picture. I have now tonight ordered the pencils for the koalas and the hair, as I can't decide which lovely art class I shall attend next. Thank you for all you do and for giving me a new lease of life, Paula. That's lovely. Thanks for the email, Paula. Yes, and I was absolutely amazed when I saw it. That was a fantastic picture. For the second project. <laughs> Unbelievable. That's an advanced picture, you say. Yeah, and I've been going on about black and how hard black is. Well, that's called me a liar, that one. <laughs> a lot of people have done amazing, I know, amazing I know. versions I, I, of that I've picture. got to say, it, in fairness, though, it's because of our video system. The, the, the way that people see how it's done, you know... You can talk about it till you're blue in the face, but that doesn't mean anything. When you see it, you mm. understand it, and that's what's happening, and that's why it's been so successful. Mm. Um, but coming back to the question, I'm really pleased that that question came along because it gave me a chance of, of explaining what backgrounds are all about. A background on a picture has only one function, and that is to enhance and complement the subject the, your own personal preferences about you know colors and so on has to take second place to that criteria okay 
So in answer to Paula's question, can she use a light background, like pinks and greens? The answer is, I wouldn't do that. And the reason I wouldn't do that is because the black Labrador is a very striking subject. Mm. You need a medium tone. Medium, not not too dark, but certainly not light. It's got to go from medium towards dark. The reason I say that is because if you if you put a light background on, the contrast between the, the black Labrador, very dark, and the background would spoil the picture. It would be too light. It would stand out too much, right? Yeah, it'd be too much contrast. And it doesn't complement. Which it, So you're not doing the picture justice. What you need to do there, and I always do with any black animal, usually, I usually put a grey on because grey and black work so well together. And I'd put a light grey in to start with, either the warm grey 270 or the 230, the cool grey. doesn't matter which one you use. Both of them are really good cushion colours. The light greys mm. to start off The with. light grey, yeah. And that would be put over the whole of the background. That sets the key for all the other colours that you can put on. I'd also then put the medium grey on. Again, it can be the cool or the warm. doesn't matter. And that can go on top of the light. Now, what that will do, it won't give you a medium grey because you've already got the light on yeah. so you'll have it it's a light medium. yes light medium yeah colour and then after that you can then put in colours of your choice I would tend to go a bit darker so I would put some uh, browns in or some blues in even a little bit of red to darken it down I would do that but Paula doesn't, doesn't have to because you've already established really a, a medium to light grey so therefore, then you can put the pinks, and then you can put your greens, and you can put those colours in, which would really, really make it look great. So all the colours that Paula was saying are valid options. It's it's really um, setting the tone before those colours first. Oh, so right. the light, medium colours, yeah, as long as they're on first. Absolutely. I think tone comes into it. It's a good question, really, because tone regulates the colour band that you're using. If If you have something that's too much of a light tone against a dark subject it it, it just won't work mm. there'll be too much contrast there so um so the answer to the question really is i wouldn't do it if i were paula unless you put the medium uh, light and medium mm, rays on no first. I, I suppose yeah no that's right um i suppose if you wanted to experiment and i certainly wouldn't experiment with that picture because it's too good but if you wanted to experiment another time with another picture or something you want to try out then you could try that try it and see because if you put the pinks and you probably have to look gray or um well i suppose you could i wouldn't use white white would be far Way too bright, too bright yeah. Yeah. yeah so you use the gray and the pink say or the light gray and the pink and a bit of green so basically put those colors on they're all light colors and they're all colors that would uh welcome a dark color on top of them so you could then put the dark gray on top of it mm. so you wouldn't spoil it particularly you just spoil the effect okay it's just just a thought if you want to experiment but certainly that picture is too good in my opinion to risk to risk it <laughs> good question paula thanks very much for your email the next one is from noel uh, noel says hello colin would you mind if i asked you a technical question if you are not supposed to use dark outlines when drawing realistically, then how can you make your drawing clear enough to be able to see the details? Thanks, Noel. Now, I didn't quite understand this question. I understand But it. you understand this question. I do. Can you explain this? Yes, <laughs> exactly. Well, what's happened in is you, you, your line drawing or your um, freehand drawing, whichever you, you choose, if it's a line drawing that you're taking from, uh, that, that you're doing your own picture, which presumably you are, then you can have dark lines which interfere with the lighter pastel colours. The dark outline. Mm. Right, okay. Because mm. you're always working on the light. If you're doing a, a pencil drawing, you would limit, and you're going to use pastel pencils, you would limit the amount of drawing you do. You wouldn't, you wouldn't put lots of shading in, for instance, because that would spoil the, the pastel. So you're looking at line drawings, really, if you're dealing with pastel pencils. And the line can be very awkward 
because it could show through the light pastel. Right. And, but on the other hand, if you've got, uh, if you make the, the line drawing too light, you might lose it when you put the pastel on. You know, you can quite easily lose it. So it's a balancing job, really. What I do when I'm doing a line drawing, anywhere that I know is going to be dark, a, a dark color that's going to be applied, I usually make the line quite strong because then I can see it. And that then helps me with all the other color, all the other light, lighter areas. One of the, the worst examples I can give is when you've got a, a portrait of a fair-skinned lady or a man, doesn't matter which, uh, and you're using light colors on the face. And they are three-quarter angle. In other words, you've got the shape of the nose coming down, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you put a hard, sharp line, dark line, on the edge of the nose to outline... Oh, to make sure you nose. know where it is, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's obvious. Otherwise, well, how would you do it? And then you try to put all your light whites and pinks and ochres onto that. Gonna... And suddenly, you've got a line showing through. Oh, my goodness, how am I going to get out of that? So this is one of the problem areas. So what I would do in a situation like that is... Um, you make the light line just that little bit fainter. So you can just see it. If you've used something like Trace Down to, to trace your outline as well, you can just rub that out. Yeah. Or, or, or use an eraser to, you know, to make it weaken fainter. It. Weaken yeah, it weaken a bit. it is the better word for weaken that. A bit. What I would do in a situation like that, funny enough, Steve, is when you've got Trace Down, it's a very, it's a very uh, light dusting of graphite. Okay, what I would do is use a B pencil, a fairly sharp one, and just go over the outline of the trace down. If you don't do that and you rub the trace down, it'll go all together. Okay. Then, then you've lost the shape of your nose. So you would have to go over it, but I, if you went over with a B, it's, it's soft enough. B is soft enough to erase. That's why I'm saying it. If you use, a, if you use an F or an HB or two a 2H, which is really quite hard, you probably wouldn't get the line out. That would that would give a... Even if you rubbed it out, you'd still have a, almost a scratch mark, so to speak. You've got to be careful. So coming back to there's more to this question you, than you thought, wasn't there? <laughs> yeah, it's quite a complicated question. It is complicated, and it's a complicated process, and really experience uh, here comes into play. Once you've, once you've done it a couple of times, you wouldn't do it again. Yeah. And you'd find a way, like I had to originally, I had to find a way of, uh, of restricting that. Um, but there are things you can do. If you were using one of our line drawings, for instance, and you found it just a little too strong, you could always weaken it with, on your computer before you actually printed it. Adjust you can, the brightness. You can adjust the brightness slightly yeah. so it doesn't come out quite so strong. That's if you're using one of ours. If you're using your own, then you've got to... You can control adjustments, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, that was a very good question, Noel, then. Thank you very much for sending that in. I hope that's helped other people out there as well. Uh, the next one <coughs> comes from Marie. Uh, Hi, Stephen Collin. Sorry to bring up the sharpening of pastel pencils debate again, as I know you have had many discussions regarding this subject, but I thought you may be interested to know the following. I've been using a scalpel, which does the job quite nicely, but found that it was aggravating my frozen shoulder problems, so had to look for an alternative. I'm now using the Swordfish Icon Desktop Manual Pencil Sharpener, which I found on Amazon, and it's brilliant. I have four brands of pastel pencils, and it sharpens them all to a very fine point if needed without breaking. For approximately £9, it is a lifesaver for my shoulder. I hope this uh, may be helpful to other members as well, who may be getting on the other side of 21. <laughs> Marie. <laughs> Um, thanks I, very much, for Marie. That's uh, brilliant. It was, and it's it it was a great bit of advice. These are the sort of things we we like, don't we? These feedbacks. Uh, I, as you know, I'm not a great pencil sharpener fan, and uh, well, having said that, I've been using pencil sharpeners for the last month or so with my um, coloring pencils. Coloring pencils because you, 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 they don't break. The pastel pencil are prone to breaking. That's the problem mm. we've got. So you need to sharpen them more carefully um, but the pencils the that I've been using the coloring pencils that I've been using pencil sharpeners and that would work really well with that with mm. that one uh, so I tend not to work them but you know it's if it works for Marie 
give it a go. For sounds, that price. I mean, yeah, it Don't sounds 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 brilliant. We've put an article and Marie's email on our blog. So if you want a link to the product on Amazon, then uh, hit, up, hit up our blog. And uh, I would tend to go. Yeah, I tend to go for those, Steve, rather than the electric ones, because the electric ones can eat your pencils up. Yeah, well, that's yeah, manual pencil sharpener. You, you mm. crank the handle, yeah, put you, the pencil in one side, crank the handle, and you can decide. You and control. Have control over it. Mm. Uh, I think they are on offer as well. So if you did want one uh, for the nine, eight or nine pound, it's on offer. No, you can't go wrong for that price. Can so, you? Thanks, Marie. The next one is from John. Hello, Colin. I would like to start uh, your landscape course, but I have a query first. I prefer using watercolour pencils rather than uh, messy tubes of paint. I have little experience of using pastel pencils, but I really love their effect. So would it be okay to, for me to do your landscape course with the watercolour and pastel pencils? Uh, well, the first thing... I would say that there is uh, don't use watercolour pencils and pastel pencils together. They don't like each other. On the other. same picture? No, they don't work. And Why you, is that? Uh, because the pastel, pastel pencil is chalky and the watercolour pencil is, I wouldn't say, waxy would be perhaps the wrong word, but they're more waxy mm. because they're water soluble anyway. So they've got to emulsifying water but they're still waxy and the, the texture of both doesn't work together I've tried it I tried it when I first started and it doesn't work mm. you can't you can't use one on top of the other either yeah you I can't. imagine yeah because there's different textures absolutely different materials you can do it with watercolour you, if you wanted to use watercolour and then put pastel on top as you know I, I've done it many many times very successfully but watercolour pencils are a unique product and you can't really put those two together but could I could you do my watercolour course with watercolour pencils yes you could you could it you'd have to work at it because the problem you've got is the watercolour pencils don't emulsify quite the same as applying watercolour because you if you imagine with watercolour, you're dipping it into a little drop of uh, watered-down paint and applying that, and you get exactly the right tone. Now, with watercolour pencils, when you put the pencil on, you're not really quite sure when you touch it with the water just how strong it's going to be. Yeah. You've got to work at that a little bit. Yeah. I am doing some experimenting at the moment. I'm doing a pic currently doing a picture, which if it turns out okay, folks, we're going to have a pen and ink watercolour pencil and watercolour. Fantastic. Uh, it's going to be good if it works. Uh, no, it will work. It's just how successful people find that compared with watercolour or pastel pencil or combination of the both. You can use watercolour pencils, though, without using them in water um, as I've proved with the as cartoons. you're doing yeah they don't they don't uh, mix as well as the pastel pencils but they do to a certain extent you can put two colors if you were, use the light to dark again again you'd have to work the light to dark principle you'd have to put the lighter colors on and you can put dark colors on top of them uh, as you will see um, eventually when the cartoon come out I do a lot of that and it, it's very very effective so you could do that. So there's a certain amount of layering you can do with yes. watercolour colouring pencils. Yes. But you can't go the other way around again, just as you can't with watercolour and with pastel pencils very easily. You can't put the dark colours on and put light over the top. They won't work. You've mm. got to go the other way around. You've got to build the colours up a little bit more. But they, mm. it does work quite well. So you can do, you could, do, in answer to the question, you could use the watercolour pencils, but not combine them with the pastel pencils. Got ya. It's knowing, it's knowing, uh, it seems there's quite a lot of different combinations and it's knowing, mm. I mean, you know, and, and the only reason why you're able to sell this is based on experience and, and other people out there, if they yeah. want to try for themselves, it's, it's you know, yeah. it's yeah. great, isn't it? Well, the thing is, um, as always, do it on spare paper. Play with them on spare paper. It's what I do. If i am just got to query, I, would it work? Does it work? No. Or yes. If you're using watercolour pencils, uh, I'll just talk about the paper briefly. Um, say, if John was going to do that, what paper would you use? Would you use watercolour paper? Yes, I would. Uh, what yes. kind of... The smoother, smoother type. Don't right. get to the very dimple ones. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can get watercolour paper with dimple ones because the water tends to lay in them and um, the pencil doesn't work so well with them. So you get the smoother watercolour papers, I would suggest. And... You've got a problem, really. If you want the best 
paper would be the heavier papers. 200 and 300 gram would be the better ones because they don't cockle and buckle yes. so readily as the thinner ones do. But those don't go through the photocopy machines and they don't go through the... Um, so if you wanted to do line, line drawings, mm. print line drawings on it, you'd have to use something like trace down. Because you could print it on cartridge paper, couldn't Absolutely. you? And then use the trace down to transfer. Absolutely what you could do, yes. There's, there's ways of doing it, but sometimes there's no easy way out of that. It's tricky, isn't it? Because mm. 200 might just go through some printers Ooh. if you force it. <laughs> it wouldn't go through mine. I've tried it. Okay. The best I've got at the moment, I've got um, the paper that I use for the cartoon I is 180 gram. And I can just about that get that one through. I have to give it a little bit of help, but it goes through. Yeah. Uh, anything heavier than that, you've got a problem. It's card, isn't it, really? Yeah. It's basically you're putting card through your printer. Yeah. I, I, it may go through industrial printing uh, machines. I'm talking about the... Desktop. Um, yeah, the ones Standard that we use. Standard home printers, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, good. So there's all the uh, emails that we want to talk about this week. It's pretty much pretty much done there. If you uh, want to send us a question, go to our website, colinbradleyart.co.uk, and click on the contact page. We pull your questions from Facebook and um, Twitter and uh, YouTube. So if you're following us any of those channels, then then you can uh, send us a comment. If you're watching this on YouTube, comment on the video below, and um, we'll we'll respond uh, and possibly bring it up on the podcast as well if we think it's going to assist. Other yeah, people. and you can see how useful those questions are, folks. I mean, Absolutely, been three really good ones today. Yeah, very good. Mm. And uh, keep an eye on our blog. Um, we've got many articles coming up on there. And uh, like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Colin1940. I put up your art story on the Facebook page uh, just yesterday just oh. uh, for people to see because your art story is already on the website, but some people might not have read it. So uh. it's a very long Facebook post. It would have been. <laughs> Goodness me. But people read it and they had some very nice comments to say about it. Oh, that's nice. So uh, if you're feeling nosy and you want to know a bit more about that, then you can yeah. go to Facebook. I don't get too personal, though, do I? No. No, no, it's within reason. It's all to, all to do with It's art. not an autobiography or anything, is it? <laughs> I couldn't write one of them, Steve. <laughs> no. No, no. No, no. But uh, anyway, so there's lots... Of, we're around uh, on all the other channels as well, so there's lots of information coming out there. We're going to have a new project that we'll reveal next week as well for, for members of our website. So whether you're subscribed to whatever plan, uh, you're likely to get something new next week. Well, one of the things I was going to mention to you, which I shall mention now, we've got a few projects now um, built up and ready for Steve to put on and that includes portraits, landscapes and animals. Yeah. So, I just thought I'd mention that all of them are going to be featured. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you, if, you're a, if you're a full member, you're getting a new project every month. Yeah. Um, and then whether you're animals, landscape or portraits um, package, you, you're going to get new portraits, you're, uh, new subjects. Mm. You'll always get something mm. new. Mm. I've got some, some points. I've said it before, but I've said it again. You've got some great products. They are. I, I can't tell you which one it is. I'll tell you next week. Uh, see, <laughs> I don't know, folks. See, how know. about that? Now, what do you think of that, folks? Hey? Got to keep them coming back, Dad. <laughs> yeah, keep it's listening. me. You should tell me, though. Oh, I'll tell you off there, yeah. It's oh, all right. All right then. <laughs> okay so uh that's it for this week thanks everyone for tuning in i'm steve bradley i'm colin bradley enjoy, enjoy your week, week.